Zizak from Lahore. That's inviting and that's 1-1. One, one. Wonderful effort to get to it, and he did his angle. Oh, it's a second for Aston Villa. Oh, Juan Pablo, first off, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank How you. does it feel to be to be back at Aston Villa? <laughs> oh, it's, it feels great. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of memories. Uh, uh, too many things happen in here, and uh, just to be back for the first time after 12 years, I mean, Phenomenal, just fantastic. And how much did you enjoy your time wearing the, the claret and blue shirt? <laughs> it, it ended up being one of the best experiences that I had in my career. Um, there was, I got off a very difficult start. Uh, so at that time, my, my, my wife has a lot of health issues uh, with my firstborn baby. And so Going back, and uh, uh, it was it was extremely, extremely difficult just to adjust to life at the beginning, and then she started to get well, and 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 things started to to move forward uh, on the field for me, and and I ended up enjoying uh, some very good seasons with some extraordinary players, uh, getting to adjust to life, getting to adjust to the culture, to understand. The importance of the meaning of, of this club, uh, not only in, in Birmingham but throughout the country, uh, how big it was and how much it meant uh, to all of the fans. So I ended up, you know, being uh, grateful uh, for being able to express myself and spend some time being part of the history of this magnificent club. If you take you back to 2001, why Aston Villa, and also? How much of a delight was it to, to think you were going to the Premier League? I've, I've, I'm going to be very, very honest in this one, Paul. Um, back on the day when I joined Villa uh, from South America, we look up to Italy and Spain in general. We didn't look up to, up to, to the Premier League much. And, and I have a couple of uh, chances to go to Italy, uh, Lazio and Parma. And I had an opportunity to go to, uh, to Spain. Uh, and the first two in Italy, they didn't capitalize because I, I, they didn't have uh, the foreign space available and I have to be bought and then loaned out to, to another team for six months and I didn't want it to, to, to happen that way. And in the middle of those negotiations, uh, Aston Villa came, came up and uh, so it was John Gregory and they told me this is a Premier League club that wanted to sign you and I didn't know much about the league to be honest I didn't know much about the history of the club and I remember my wife uh, was just about to to to, to have the first baby we were about, about to have the, the first baby and I was looking at uh, the club the history of the club the city and everything uh, and I did remember obviously some of the clubs my United Liverpool and so on and so forth and and I thought about it and said, you know what, let's go. There, there weren't that many South American players in here. And, and I made my mind up and I ended up just coming to the Premier League and it turned out to be that it became the best league in the world and you know, being able to play with some of the best players in, in a very competitive league was, was fantastic. Yeah. As you said, tough start to life, Aston Villa, but how important was that goal against Coventry? Because it seemed to set you off. <laughs> It, it was great. I mean, there was a lot of difficult uh, things uh, during my, my first few months. And, and that one, one of the hardest things for me was that at that time the club didn't really have anybody to look after foreign players from our latitudes, from our region. And, and obviously nobody expects that, you know, a player that you're signing go through those difficult moments. And, but the majority of the things I had to do it on my own and I couldn't speak the language, I didn't really have much support. And, and then as a result of my situation, um, they ended up bringing a welfare person to the club that ended up doing a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal job for all of the new foreign players that came to, to the club. Uh, but the lack of support at that time and the difficulties and the demands of the league obviously make it, make, make it extremely difficult. And, and just to be able to overcome that and, and ended up, you know, in a way, um, performing well for the club. I think it was just uh, was a big challenge, but also I think it was uh, it took a lot of resilience and respect for everybody 
to show them that, uh, that I was good enough to play for this club. We go through the, a few seasons. The following season, we finished eighth and you were joint top scorer with Darius Vassell. Yeah. We've spoken to him and he's spoken about how much he enjoyed playing with you, but yeah. just said it was a shame that you didn't, that the partnership yeah. didn't last as long. How much did you enjoy playing with Darius? I mean, Darius was not just a, a top block, but uh, he, was a, he was a very good player. He has the pace, so it was a, a, a very good combination. And we got him well, although I was older than he was. Uh, we got him well and he was a quiet kid, but he, he did all the hard work and he ran the channels, he was a threat all the time. And one of the things that, you know, I, you obviously I realized very early on my time in here is the difference between those top clubs and, and us at that time. Uh, and a lot of it had to do with uh, the money that we spent in the transfer market. So then soon after the Rias left, when he was playing probably he, his best football uh, for the club. So not being able to hold on, hold on to those big players obviously makes uh, made, made a big difference for us. Uh, and then you have to start again, build up, building up a partnership with someone else that you didn't know, and it took time. So di we didn't really have that continuity in the squad, uh, and that obviously affects us in terms of results. 2002-03, you were in and out of the side with with Graham Taylor, but then yeah. David O'Leary came in, and yeah. you got to say that's probably your best season, how much do you enjoy that, that, that yeah, season? To be honest with you, I, I didn't even think that I was going to continue in the club. Uh, we didn't enjoy a great season with, with Graham uh, and we, I remember that we almost even got relegated uh, towards the end. We ended up saving the season, if I'm not mistaken, against Sunderland at the end of, the, of, the, of that campaign. So we didn't really have a good time, was the, env the environment wasn't great in, 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 in the house. And, and I wanted it to live. And so I got an opportunity to go to Real Betis in Spain and everything was pretty much done for me to go. Um, and when I turned back, I got, came back from, from holidays, uh, I was basically, on my mind was me going. And so I come back and, and uh, as soon as I walk into the, the, the training ground, uh, he was this new manager. Uh, and I said, what's going on? I didn't even know that, uh, know that uh, Graham was, was gone. So I talked to Dave O'Leary and he told me that he wanted me to be part of the, of the team. Uh, we kind of got on well in that first conversation. He told me what he was looking to do, what he did at that time, on his, uh, his time at Leeds. And I decided to stay. I thought that it was something, you know, me more to, something for me uh, to do in here still. And we ended up having a tremendous season. It was the football was fantastic. We the atmosphere in the place was great, and and I and I I mean I really enjoy and have a lot of good memories about that year with him. He he did a lot of good things for not only for me but for for that squad. Sixteen goals in the league that season. I think over twenty goals in all competitions. How does that feel as a striker when you you almost feel every single week you're going to score? <laughs> it was phenomenal, but uh, I. Uh, it took me a long time to realize the importance of scoring that many goals in the Premier League for a club that wasn't in the top four. Uh, and, and I think it was a great achievement. Uh, and obviously that was due to the players that I had and the, and the coaching stuff and everything that we did and the club did throughout the year. But uh, uh, everything, everything worked for me and, and I was getting into or getting the chances that I was, wasn't getting before and, uh, and I knew that I was capable of doing it because I did it before in previous clubs and but do it at this level in this league uh, with the resources that we had I think it, it was and as I said to you it took me time to, to realize the, how important it was and how uh, good obviously it was to be able to break break the 20 goals marked uh, for Aston Villa in a season. Yeah. Clinical double against Leicester, rocket against Chelsea in yeah. the League Cup, yeah. double against Wolves. Yeah. What, what was your favourite moment of that season? Because there were uh, so many. Um, there was a lot. I mean, and as I said to you, you can sense the atmosphere in Villa Park. You know, every time we play, every time we turn up to a game, people you know, could feel that we had something special, that we could do something. I'm not saying that we could win the league, but we, but we felt at that time that we could probably have a real chance of getting into any of the European, European competitions and, and that feeling kept us going uh, and the, the goal against Chelsea was fantastic, I mean uh, just that was 
the beginning of the Roman Abramovich regime. And so he brought all this money. I think Claudio Ranieri was the coach at that time. Uh, so they came up to Villa Park with all the superstars and we managed to keep them off uh, the cup. That was, that was fantastic. And, and obviously it ended up being a great season. You obviously played with some great players. I could throw some names at you, if you can give me your opinion of, of oh some of God. that. Just going back into my first year, I mean, any name that I that I that I could tell was was a good player. We have the likes of you know, Davy James, Sar Gareth Southgate, uh, Ian Taylor, George Bolton, Paul Merson, David Ginola, Alpayo Salan, uh, Dario Basel, Dean Dublin. I mean, it was I mean any one of them. Uh, then the likes of Milan Barros, uh, we have Patrick Berger, uh, Martin Larson, Olof Melberg. I mean, there was a lot of, lot of good names. Got to ask you about Villa Park. Oh, phenomenal, phenomenal, whole tent. I mean, it's just uh, everything. When, when I look back on time and I remember goals and moments and situations that I lived in here, it was just a lot of good memories. You know, everything is, is it's good about you know what I remember uh, of my my time in Villa Park, any game experiences, everything. Yeah. You had the one Pablo Angel chant. One. Oh. <laughs> one Pablo Angel. Yeah. I mean, how good was that bond with the supporters? You he was great. Really... I mean, to be honest with you, uh, I was grateful from day one, uh, and when they kind of the word was was spread about this, my wife situation they kind of understood what was going on behind the scenes and they were very supportive and from day one they took me on and and I remember when I came to England uh, I was landed at Gatwick Airport and I went came all the way back because the team was playing against Liverpool uh, and I went to the stands I was sit with Doug Ellis and obviously all the uh, board members and we were losing at three. Uh, we were losing three nil at, at half time, and I was thinking, "Oh my, what's going on?" And I think out of desperation, we didn't even sign the contract. We we just basically come and finalize the deal. I was coming to finalize the deal, and he grabbed me by his hand. I couldn't understand a word of what he said. We're talking about Doug Ellis, and he took me down at half, at half time, and he presented me in front of everybody, and <laughs> and I just, what's going on? I didn't know. I didn't even have my contract. So there was no way back because the way people reacted to me uh, that day was, was phenomenal. And, uh, and then I spent uh, some, I think it was seven years, a little bit more than seven years. And obviously really good memories about it. Yeah. It's obviously been a, a difficult period for us recently dropping out mm. of the Premier League. Is it fair to say you'd agree that this club should be Premier League and how excited for the, the future with Dean Smith? I mean, it's, it's, this is a massive club and, and I'm not saying because I'm in front of the cameras that I always told the, the story and I keep saying the story is as a, an incredible fans throughout the world, not just in here. Uh, and he, it doesn't belong to the championship. This club has to be, must be uh, in the Premier League. And, and everybody that has been um, that have, has taken part of the history of this club, or in a way related to this club, can tell you that you know it's just a shame to be where we are, and we just have to do whatever we have to do uh, in order for us to get back to where we belong. And because we're Premier League, we're we're not Championship. Simple as that. Finally, Juan Pablo, what does this club mean to you in your in your heart? I mean, uh, I'm a Villa fan, simple as that, I, and, and I will always be, be grateful with this club. It gave me the opportunity, as I said to you, the, to express myself in here, to, to be myself, to grow up as a person. Uh, two of my kids were born in here, and, and I, I only have good memories throughout the difficult times, with good times, not so good times, but a good seven years of my life were spending here, and I can always, you know, say good things about, say good things about not only the supporters, the club, uh, everybody, the players that I play with, uh, only have good memories about that, and and hopefully, one day I have something to do with the club in 
in another part of it in another uh, level uh, but would love to be able to, to, to take part of this club again somehow.